This new moon in Scorpio at 21 degrees will be a little intense. It's happening on November 13th, uh, around 4 a.m. So November 13th, November 14th, depending on where you live. Now, I've said in my readings, I personally like new moons in Scorpio. They bring a little bit of heat and that intensity. You can drive it toward your passions and feel really empowered with them. Now, if you think about Scorpio, it is all about passions and your passions and really diving deep. Like I've said that Daniel Craig and Knives Out energy, it really is uh, exploring and uncovering like hidden truths and feeling a lot more intuitive and really trusting your intuition and letting your intuition guide you. Now, there's two reasons why this new moon in Scorpio is really, really, really big. One, new moons bring new beginnings right? They, uh, new opportunities, new paths, new journeys. They kick off a cycle, a new cycle. It's happening in Scorpio, which is all about rebirth and transformation. So there's definitely something new that everyone in a collective level will be going through around this new moon in Scorpio. But on the other side of it, Uranus, the planet of surprises, is opposing Mars and the sun and this new moon. So there will be an element of the unexpected. So around this time of the new moon, you could experience some challenges that come out of the blue, uh, out of nowhere, okay? There may be some things that, uh, you know, really, really heighten your emotions at this time. And remember, uh, we're already in this uh, Scorpio season where your emotions are heightened uh, already, but there is good news. A, some may feel it a little less than others. It depends on how you handle it. If you stay cool, if you stay patient, if you are in touch with your higher self, trust your intuition. Again, that's a big thing with Scorpio. Uh, you will be fine. Uh, you will be on top of it. You can navigate these challenges, uh, water off a duck's back. The other thing is that, as I said in my readings, the new moon has a shelf life that is up to six months, okay? So remember, this is a cycle. Now, this opposition uh, that's happening over uh, this new moon, it's just making a, this time around this week a little, oh, like maybe just, you know, you could feel some pressure. Uh, you could feel a little bit of, uh, you know, low energy frequencies around this time. Uh, but again, it's really how you handle it and, and navigate it. So it is a great new moon in Scorpio that is bearing fruit uh, for uh, uh, the full moon in Scorpio. That's going to happen in April 2024. Yeah, this and hey, I'm going to tell you why that's a big deal. OK, but before I do that, just let me just remind you. Expect new opportunities for every sign. That's what new moons do. They bring new opportunities, okay? New paths, new journeys. It's a step forward. It's a step forward. And so with this new moon bringing all these opportunities, it's like the challenges that you may experience over the weekend will be worth it for you. If you can hang in there and you can stay on top and navigate it, you're going to be fine. Chef's kiss, uh, all of that. Keep your energy high. Stay compassionate. That is truly key here too with all the other aspects that are happening uh trust your intuition let your intuition guide you now before you jump to your sign let me just tell you a little bit more about what's going to happen because we're going to time travel a bit as well now remember how i said this new moon is corresponding to the full moon in april 2024 well let me just tell you that full moon in scorpio on april 23rd 24th depending on where you live it's happening just days before Jupiter conjuncts Uranus. And let me really emphasize this. This is one of the biggest aspects that's going to happen in 2024. The Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is in Taurus. Jupiter is in Taurus. Uranus is in Taurus. And it's happening April 20th, 2024. This conjunction only happens every 14 years or so. Whoa, this is a big deal. So even though I did a weekly reading for November 13th to the 19th, that was a reading for that week. And but because this new moon in Scorpio is so intense, I'm going to really pare it down here and just only focus on the new moon in Scorpio and what every sign can expect, all 12 signs. And we will, yes, travel to the future and see what you can expect in April 23rd, 24th with the corresponding full moon. So let's get started. Okay, Aries and Aries rising. So this uh, new moon in Scorpio is going to be uh, pretty transformative for you, especially if you are Aries rising. But every Aries 
every Aries is going to feel it. Uh, it is in your eighth house, so that is ruled by Scorpio. And so it is deeply transformative. It's, it's again, uh, expect changes. I mean, this new moon uh, kicking off this new cycle for you in this uh, house, which is all about rebirth and new cycles. It's a big thing. It's a big deal. Okay. The eighth house, other uh, it rules other people's money as well. And so you could have some focus around that area in terms of, you know, investments, inheritance, uh, paying off debts, uh, maybe your partner's income. Uh, that could be a, a thing here. Um, it's also, uh, uh, the interesting thing is that uh, Uranus is actually in Taurus in your second house. So that's, again, as I explained in your last uh, weekly reading, that is uh, your two money houses, okay? So that's the two money houses of the Zodiac Wheel. So there could be something about money that comes up around this new moon in Scorpio. The second house is also self-worth, it's self-confidence, it's that uh, a feeling of like comfort and stability and, you know, the, the levels that you bring to that. So it's really feeling confident at this time in what you're doing and in terms of the changes that are happening in your life. So Aries, uh, what else is going on for you? Let's see. That's uh, that's really it. Just Uranus, again, can bring some surprises. Okay. Again, around money, around uh, your finances. But again, if you're not here for money, if money is not a thing for you, if you are literally Lady Gaga watching this video and you're just like, money, what? Uh, it is all about you on a deep level. It's you having this transformative experience. It's you and your self-worth and knowing like what your worth is. For instance, like, you know, maybe you are in a job and you're just like, I'm not getting paid what I'm worth. You, they, you could have these moments now. OK, so uh, let's get started. Let's see what is going on with you. I'm going to do a very short spread here, but one that is going to give you a little bit more insight on what to expect for this ooh, new moon in uh, Scorpio. So. With that said, Aries, let's do it. So, Aries, uh, can you see? Let's, uh, okay, there we go. Oh, wow, Aries. Okay, this is great. You're good. Um, you're good. You, listen, this is, uh, uh, you're good. I can't even, um, all right. So, you know, your, your, your reading was amazing, by the way, your, your, your weekly reading. So, uh, this is expected here. You did get the eight of, uh, cups. Okay. So I really like this for you, uh, especially because where it uh, falls in your spread, it really is just kind of like, it is, you know, we would consider it recent past, but it's corresponding to like what's been going on for you, like with Scorpio season. Okay. We recently went into Scorpio season and that's a big thing. Okay, especially because Mars is like there's so many planets in Scorpio, so really intense. But uh, you got the Eight of Cups, and so you have been thinking about leaving things behind, you have been thinking about moving forward, you have been actually uh, possibly feeling a lot more empowered, feeling a little bit more in control, feeling like, okay, I know something is better for me out there. I know that uh, uh, I can find a lot more joy in moving uh, forward, whether it is, you know, a, a career, whatever fills you, emo fulfills you emotionally. Okay. I mean, that is, we're talking about the cups here. So uh, it can be career. It can be a relationship. It can be uh, uh, whatever resonates with you, but you can see that he is leaving the cups behind. There's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with the cups. He just knows something's better. You can also see the eclipse happening. Uh, so it is, uh, you know, it could have been, you're looking at what's happening here. Uh, it could have been, uh, uh, even like it's for, in some cases, like bittersweet in terms of this change, this evolution that you're going through, something that you are leaving behind. It could have been hard. There could have been some, you know, really intense self-discovery, uh, or you could have just recognized something about yourself that you're just like, okay, this is, you know, not, of what I want for, you know, my journey, um, and my spiritual journey, it's, it's time to shake things up. So I really love the fact that you did get the eight of cups. Okay. And it, when I say deep level, the eight of cups is attributed to Saturn and Pisces. And for you, that is your 12th house anyway. Okay. The 12th house is intuition. It is a subconscious. It is really going deep. So I really, really absolutely love that for you. Now you did get the two of swords. So this is just sort of, this is a, a corresponding to, um, 
what you should be focusing on now with the new moon. And again, this is very interesting. Uh, you do see the sliver of the moon in the background, and it is, um, uh, again, a lot of intuition here as well. Uh, so going within, really just going within. But when I say going within, listen, this is, you can say, sure, uh, being in touch with your higher self and, 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 and listening to, you know, your inner voice and, and letting your intuition guide you. But really feel it in your bones okay really feel it in your bones really take that moment to the point where you're comfortable taking this blindfold off uh you see that you got like double water here and water is emotion so again scorpio season very emotionally based very emotionally charged uh you could have been just really going through some emotional moments in this new moon in scorpio will definitely be very emotional for you and you know there could be an element of um you know uh partnerships and relationships that is something that you will be thinking about over this new moon in scorpio especially because this card is attributed to uh, new moon or sorry, uh, moon in Libra. Uh, and the fact that the South node moved into Libra for you back in July. Yeah. Way back in July. Right. Uh, that was your seventh house. Okay. Of, of partnerships and relationships. So it could be something that you're thinking about right now and really, really, th I mean, like on a hugely emotional, I'm going to show you something here. Um, you can see that they're both both cards have water, right? You see the sea, but you see rocks in the water in both these cards. So it's it's saying that maybe this hasn't been the easiest journey for you, but at least you're doing it and you should definitely be proud of yourself and really spend that time, okay? Quality time with yourself, okay? Spend some time really thinking about your next steps, okay? Because you do have a lot coming, in fact, you have the page of wands, so you are definitely moving towards something new. Pages bring that new energy. They are the newbies in the royal court. Uh, so uh, even though you know they are considered like the young ones in in, in tarot, they're still in the royal court. And so wands are your passions, uh, you know your ideas. It's even like very work related enterprise job, but it's still just something that you're passionate about. Remember Scorpio season, this new moon. It's all about your passions, right? So uh, really take advantage. of this is kind of like what you can expect uh, uh the outcome right uh so there is definitely something new uh that you're compelled by something new that it's almost like you are having this huge resurrection okay now we are going to time travel into the future as i said this new moon in scorpio corresponds to the full moon in scorpio in april april is going to be a gangbusters month by the way 2024 uh and so this is uh very very nice for you because it's happening like right out after your birthday season, but um, it's 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 something that uh, uh, well, let me just show you. You have the six of wands, so the full moon is where you kind of like you know in Scorpio, like whatever you started back in new moon, uh, during this time. Okay, you see kind of like the rewards that you're gonna reap uh, around the full moon in Scorpio, and you're good. <laughs> You're absolutely good. You have a lot to look forward to. You have apps. I mean, this is a card of victory. It's the card of a success. It's the card of, um, uh, you know, it's it's eminence. OK. And so, uh, you know, if you trace the word eminence back to its etymological root back way back, we're going way back to Latin. It's 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 uh, eminere, which mean, meant to uh, to rise above. OK, so uh, you're good. You're really good. Aries, I'm very excited for you. Just do that like continue to go within uh again at your comfort level and just know that uh this new moon in scorpio where you got a, two cards with the moon like really you know the moon is intuition and emotions like really go deep really go deep and and really know you what what you want moving forward all right but uh you can see that there's so much newness happening in your life and it looks like it will be successful but as long as you you know do the work and and take that action okay thanks so much aries Okay, Taurus, so this new moon in Scorpio is going to be in your seventh house. So this is uh, your uh, seventh house is partnerships and relationships. All right. So uh, some of y'all could be moving into new partnerships, new relationships, whether work, whether career, whether home, whether domestic, uh, your domestic sector, you know, your significant other. Uh, so either starting a new relationship uh, or, or building on one, uh, taking a relationship to the next level. That's what this new moon is doing. Remember, it's... 
this new cycle for you and a new opportunity. So if you're single, you could see a lot of movement here. Uh, it's it, especially with, you know, Venus and Libra, which is really nice. OK, Venus and Libra is very nice for you. Uh, there is going to be. And again, remember, that this is work career or love romance but uh partnerships in a, a sense of like if you're not here for any of that uh it could be uh you know just one-on-one -on -one relationships so uh if, if you're for instance like house hunting it could be like working with a realtor as well uh there could be like a new realtor coming into the scene or or whatnot so keep that in mind uh now uranus as we know is in your sign so you would, uh, you're, I'm not going to, you're going to feel this. Okay. You're going to feel this, uh, you, the Uranus opposition. So, uh, this is you it's in your first house. So it is like, I, you know, your identity, it's like the, the role that you play. Um, so it's also like your physical body. So just be aware of, you know, the things that, you know, uh, you know, if, if they're, if they're, if they're, you know, doing construction on your, on your street and they say watch out and you're listening to your i don't know ipod or whatever and and uh, wait that doesn't even exist anymore sorry <laughs> if you're listening to some music and you're not even paying attention you're you need to watch it just watch out okay so uh it just keep that in mind uh again you never know what will happen you never know with, with especially uh with this uh with uranus opposing not only the new moon but also mars and the sun so uh uh, really anything is like up in the air but let's go ahead and start get started let's see what is uh what you can expect for this new moon in uh, uh scorpio for you uh and scorpio is your opposite sign but even let's well let's let's do this let's see what's going on uh for you taurus uh see what you can expect for this new moon in uh oh wow in Scorpio. Now, what's really okay, I'm going to talk about that later, but uh yeah, the, so you here you're 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 fine. There may be again uh not surprising uh looking at your spread, but there there may be something that you may have to pay a little bit more attention to, but you did get the King of Swords. Um well, the biggest energy that's coming through. So this is attributing to like what's been going on recently for you. Um, and when I say recently, I'm really focusing on Scorpio season. OK, because that is like a, it, it, it's been intense with Mars and Mercury and Scorpio as well. Uh, so King of Swords, there you go. That's absolutely amazing. I really love this for you. Um, King of Swords is uh, you just uh, the biggest message is like you powering up you feeling very empowered you uh being in a place where remember how i said scorpio season in itself is just like really going deep really like uh uncovering and revealing like hidden truths and facing them now to move forward well i mean that's what the king of swords is okay uh but also like being in a position where you are uh so uh like no one can hide anything from you, okay? So uh, Scorpio season is all about secrets and mystery as well, but it's like you're on guard. You know what's going on, and in a sense, there is like it's kind of like if you were to walk in a room, like everyone would know that like you have the power, right? It's, it's really nice. It's really, really good. It's almost like, you know, uh, just kind of like what's happening here. I, have you seen the show Survivor? It's almost like you have the hidden immunity idol. Does that make does that make sense? Okay, uh, and nobody knows. Like you have so much power. Okay, so you've been moving into a lot more power, and that's really great. And so I really like that for you. And a lot of it can honestly have to do with career as well. Uh, you know, the King of Swords is Aquarius. Kings are fixed, and you know, swords are. Uh, air and Aquarius is a fixed air sign. So uh, it's it's uh, and that is your 10th house of career and f and, and, and your social status and fame, uh, public recognition, honors, achievements. So this is really great. Now, you did get the five of wands. So the five of wands is uh, where it is attributed to is like 
what to look out for during this new moon, what you can expect and like prepare for. And it looks like there is going to be a little bit of conflict. It may be minor, uh, but uh, five of wands is a card of severity uh, when you attribute it to the tree of life. Uh, it is the least severe, though. So that's a good thing. It's almost like there's there may be some egos at play around this new moon. So it really is just, you know, if there's a, if, if there's a lot of egos at play, uh, uh, if there's a lot of people talking, a lot of like voices, um, a lot of, you know, co too many cooks in the kitchen, there is a sense of like making sure that things are a little streamlined, that people are seeing eye to eye. Someone has to step up and be that leader. It's got to be you. OK, so if anything should happen, just be that person. OK, there could be something with children as well. Uh, uh, if you have kids where they may be a little like, uh, but they're, uh, you know, it, again, um, it really is feeling more in your external world for me. Uh, so, again, there could be a conflict and I'm not surprised. As I said, Uranus does bring surprises, so it can be something that is uh, uh, conflicty, but not worth your time. It's just more like annoying energy, all right? So there could be some sort of conflict that is more like, all right, y'all, there's just too many egos here, too many egos. Let's see eye to eye, okay? So uh, you did get uh, immediately following it, the six of wands. So that's why it's also like, it's going to be possibly really minor and it's just how you handle the situation because this card is attributed to the outcome of that and you immediately go from the five of ones to the six of ones six of ones is all about victory it's all about success it's all about rising above i mean it is eminence okay so which literally if if you trace that back to its etymological root uh eminere right to uh all the way back to latin to rise above uh i mean you're you're absolutely good here uh and then the fun one, hey, you get the page of Pentacles. So this is attributed to what can you expect April 23rd, 2024 with a full moon in Scorpio. Now, let me just tell you how big this is for you, Taurus. And I'm only telling you. Well, now I'll probably tell the other signs. Remember how I said in the intro that uh, you're we're, we're having that conjunction with Uranus and Jupiter. They're both in your sign. This is major so this full moon in Scorpio that's happening three days after that conjunction come on come on that's big that's big and you got the page of Pentacles which is uh you know very Taurus energy here you know pages are earthbound Pentacles are earthbound so it's double earth and you being an earth sign obviously you know it's it, it it's a great great uh, uh correspondence there but uh yeah you can expect uh whatever happens this weekend the the new thing that starts to develop it's like even more newness it's almost like building upon that uh but it could be like the end of something uh that comes around the full moon in scorpio where uh uh it 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 like blooms this new thing okay pages bring in that new energy that fresh new energy and as you can see it's money and wealth here okay it's money and wealth now i am not surprised again the reason why is because not not uh, uh just a few weeks after just a few weeks after this full moon in scorpio jupiter is actually moving into gemini and that is going to be your second house of money and 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 salary and finances so jupiter being in your second house you uh will likely make more money and the most money than you've made since 2013 2014 around that time uh but we'll talk about that in april uh you have a lot to look forward to just know that there could be something like conflicty around this new moon for you uh it really is going to be uh you know minor but it's still going to be ego like a lot of egos at play so uh just be that leader be that you know king of swords energy uh leading you straight to success okay thanks so much taurus Okay, Gemini. So this new moon in Scorpio is going to be in your sixth house. So that's everyday activities. It's your routines. You've been working so hard. Uh, it's been, you know, that's what Scorpio season's been for you. Uh, and Scorpio season has been intense because it's not just the sun in Scorpio. Remember Mercury in Scorpio, Mars in Scorpio. It's been uh, intense. And you could have just been working really hard or your daily life could have been really active, really busy the past, uh, you know, few weeks 
weeks and this new moon in Scorpio, it's going to bring some new thing with with career. There could be, uh, you know, new employees uh, uh, that you're bringing on. If you work at a company, it could be uh, you hiring someone or you getting a new job or, you know, if you're a freelancer, a new project that you're starting. Uh, there's something new around that, like your passions, work, uh, career, but also remember daily activities. The sixth house is also health. OK, so it is uh, there could be a new perspective in terms of your health. There could be something that you do differently. Maybe you're a Pilates person and you decide, hey, this I, I think I like yoga instead. Uh, whatever it is, uh, it could be, you know, diet as well. But uh, whatever it is, uh, there is that newness that it's bringing. And so it's again, we're kicking off a new cycle here. It's six houses also pets. Like I wouldn't be surprised if uh, you were thinking about getting a pet around this time. Now, this uh, Uranus. OK, so Uranus and Taurus is in your uh, 12th house. All right. So this is remember how Scor I said Scorpio seasons already like pretty deep it's really deep it's you know emotionally charged and it's really like diving deep uh uh, uh but it's it the fact that uranus is in your 12th house that is the 12th house is your subconscious and it's hidden things and it's facing fears and it's you know uh, uh even like the past so there could be something that comes up uh surprising that it has to do with any of that so uh it could be something that uh happens where you it you know, inspires you to really unroot things, really, you know, face your fears right now. Okay. I think I made a reference as like, you know, being the final girl uh, in a horror film, but instead of running away from the monster, you're just like, no, ma mama, or <laughs> uh, you, and you go chasing it. Okay. You go chasing it and facing your fears now. So uh, let's see what's going on for you, Gemini, for uh, the new moon in. Scorpio. Okay, so Gemini, I'm doing a four card spread here. Um, and I am going to be Oh, wow, interesting. Um, what well, your life is changing, and you can expect your life to change. Um, so a uh, big time, uh, really big. So you got the death card. You got the actual card of Scorpio. This card is ruled by Scorpio. So what I say, Scorpio season has been like really intense for you. Uh, there could have been uh, some things that have happened recently that have really inspired you to change, really encourage you to change, really encourage this transformation in your life. Or it could have just been organically happening in a way where you're just like, okay, I'm moving forward uh, in, 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 because I want to take more control and I want to like really transform. Uh, I mean, like the death card is all about transformation, as you know, um, and you can even see the sun coming out on the horizon here. I mean, this really is just uh, attributed to the, you know, sure, recent past, but I'm focusing on for, uh, Scorpio season. And so the fact that you did get the card of Scorpio is really telling here. And so this is one of the best cards on the deck. I want you to know that a lot of people, when they see that death card, they're just like, ah, it's one of the best. Again, you see the sun coming out on the horizon. This is all about change. You see the white horse, the white rose, uh, purity. I mean, you're you're good. You're good uh, because it leads to the Queen of Swords. OK, so now this card is attributed to uh, what you can expect for this new moon. And so remember how I said there's so much happening up here. OK, with, you know, the, the with Uranus in, in, in your 12th house, uh, but a lot of intuition energy at play for you. But it's also with the queen of swords it's bringing that intellect and that logic i mean you your ruling planet is mercury by the way so it really is bringing all of that uh there is this level of like uh you know when i look at your everything that's happening here it's almost like i'm gonna it's like I'm going to make sure my life changes, damn it, <laughs> especially with the Queen of Swords, right? So this is what you can expect for the new moon. You're just cutting out all the BS, okay? You're cutting out all the BS. Uh, the Queen of Swords, interestingly, she is, uh, you see no water in this card. She is very, like leaving emotions at the door okay leaving emotions at the door but for a good reason is because uh she doesn't want emotions to cloud her judgment so it's you just really being laser focused and really you know uh feeling empowered okay it's sitting in this throne because you've gone through a lot i mean if you think about like the queen of swords backstory it's like 
almost like you being in this position where not only have you gone through a lot and now you feel a lot more empowered because it's, you know, you've, you've climbed your way back up, but being in a place where you don't want to have anyone, uh, to go through what you went through, like within your family or your sphere or your orbit or your squad, uh, or even career related, but it's also you never wanting to go back, like some of the hard things that you've experienced. So I really like this for you. The Queen of Swords is Libra. So it's almost like, again, with looking at what's happening here, Libra is, ha is your fifth house, right? So love and romance and, and, and pleasure, family, children, creativity, self-expression. So it really is like, I've been working too hard. It's time for me to like, you know, uh, move forward from all that, have a little bit more fun now. I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to have more fun in the things that I do because it just feels like uh, there's been some, definitely some transformation happening. Um, now, you did get the Wheel of Fortune. So this is amazing you know this card is actually ruled by jupiter so you know you going doing like this deep diving uh really going on to like a subconscious level you know facing your fears like i said uh it seems like you're well protected here uh especially with the wheel of fortune this is a card of like luck and uh you know good fortune uh it is actually ruled by jupiter too jupiter happens to be in taurus as well and so it's almost like you're protected in in, in a nice way but it's it it's a game changing card this is saying that uh it's attributed to what you can expect and so you can expect a lot of luck moving forward a lot of luck moving forward a lot of uh really good uh uh, like game changing uh, things are happening for you. It is a game changing card and it is 10. Okay. So uh, 10, one, zero equals one new beginning that comes with this new moon, new beginning, new opportunities. Now forecasting time traveling. We're looking at the full moon in Scorpio, April 23rd, 24th. You have the three of swords. Okay. So another Libra card interesting so there could be something new that starts happens around this time uh well looking at when you look at your spread here and I'm gonna do a clarifier yeah that's what I thought okay so uh there is something around April 23rd that you are going to uh end and it may be heartbreaking in a way but uh not in a way where it's hard for you you see clarified you got the king of wands and so, uh, hello. So April 23rd, April 24th, full moons bring culmination. They bring conclusion. There is an ending. Okay. And it is, uh, something that is going to be corresponding to what happens around this time. Again, you have a lot to look forward to. You've got the wheel of fortune. Okay. It's, it's like hitting jackpot. Now, April 23rd, 24th, it looks like there is something coming to an end, but it seems like it's something like, uh, almost like, uh, like a, like a career or a, not a career, like a job or something is there's going to be something coming to an end that may be hard for you as in like, you've lived in the same, you know, place for 10 years, but then you meet someone and then, you know, you, the relationship develops and then you get marry and then you decide to move cross country or whatnot. That's, you know, it's hard and it's emotionally, you know, uh, impactful to leave something that you knew for so long. Uh, and, and that's that full moon, like bringing closure to that, but for something majorly auspicious. Okay. And so keep that in mind. It can be just something that, uh, and you know, I know it's, it's, it's a hard card to look at. I'm not, you know, it, it is, it's, you know, three swords piercing a heart, but it is, uh, you know, every card has hope, right? And you can see in this card, there's a rainstorm. So what comes after a rainstorm? A rainbow, okay, which in terror, you know, pretty much indicates a promising future. And then you have the king of wands, which is, I mean, sitting in that throne. I mean, going from the queen of swords to the king of wands, uh, really nice. King of wands is, uh, you know, you just uh, not only feeling empowered, but uh, like 
passions like all your passions are like starting to become fulfilled you uh again more transformative energy that comes with the king of wands you do see the salamander at his foot there uh salamanders without getting too much into it back in the medieval times the only animal in the world that everyone thought was fireproof like they could live through fire and ones you know represent fire so really interesting like you are in it to win it and there is something that you can uh, again, something is going to come to an end. It might be emotionally impactful to you, but know that it's actually all for the best. And let me, let me just tell you, uh, oh gosh, I mean, when I say we're ta time traveling to April, not April 23rd, 24th. So not even like just a few weeks later. Jupiter moves into your sign, Gemini. So you've waited this moment. It's been 12 years. It's been 12 years. A planet of good luck, good fortune, prosperity, which showed up in your spread, in your, you know, what to expect is moving into your sign, Gemini. You are going to have the most luck. Uh, it, it's almost, you are definitely, it's a 12 year cycle, right? So starting uh, around May next year, you're going to have the best year that you've had since about two 2012, 2013. So you can see that there is some things that are coming to an end. It's like packing up. It's packing up. It's ready to uh, ascending in this new chapter in your life. So you're you're actually really good. Just know that something may uh, happen around that time. Again, full moons do bring conclusion. Something could be uh, and it could be like emotionally impactful for you and it could be up here as well especially with the queen of swords and then you know at the end of the day even though this is considered like the heart eight card or whatnot it's still a sword suit okay it's a sword suit so the sword's like the mental suit so there could be something that you're just like ah like I, i'm gonna miss this but you're good thanks gemini I, you're good okay thank you Hello, Cancer. All right. So this new moon is in uh, Scorpio in your fifth house. OK, so this is amazing, Cancer. I want you to get really excited. The fifth house is the house of pleasure. It's pleasure. It's love. It's romance. It's uh, 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 creativity. It's self-expression. It's, you know, family and children and uh, even procreation. Like, you know, some of it. So with this new moon, some of y'all may uh, be having kids or thinking about having kids or, you know, there could be some new hobby that you pick up that you really love. Love, but it's something that is really big, something that you're really passionate about. But just think pleasure. I think pleasure um, and love is a big thing. A lot of y'all may uh, find yourselves falling in love around this time or taking your love uh, to the next level, you know, really ascending or, you know, finding that spark, uh, whatnot in a relationship. Uh, but the so Uranus, though, is uh, in your 11th house. OK, so the big picture here, it seems like there if should any challenges arise with the uranus opposition which is bringing surprises uh and the unexpected uh you know the 11th house is your friends and it's your uh social network it's your you know even like your linkedin community uh and groups and organizations so there could be something uh there okay there could be something in terms of that uh so uh let's see what's going on for you cancer for uh this new moon in scorpio uh again it's happening november 13th to the or, or november 13th but you know depending on where you live where you live uh november 13th 14th but either way just uh think around this time all right so cancer let's see what's going on for you for this new moon in scorpio which i Again, it's is a great one, but the Uranus opposition is is interesting. Oh wow. Uh, you're good. <laughs> You're good, but it's going to be, a, it, it, I'm not going to lie. It may be a challenging new moon for you. Okay. So let's, 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 let's see what you got here. You got the nine of pentacles. All right. So this is really great. Uh, a lot of y'all are, uh, you know, this card is attributed to what's been going on for cancers. Okay. And when I say what's been going on, like sure, recent past, but I'm focusing more on Scorpio season here because it's been such a big deal with Mars and Scorpio, with Mercury and Scorpio. I mean, it's been really intense, but it's like, you've been like, oh, we're good we're good uh you can see that there's uh 
look at her harvest okay she's definitely like in this place where she feels really good there's a lot of like uh you know financial independence a lot of like self-sufficiency uh but a lot of money a lot of wealth a lot of abundance a lot of abundance uh and you know even clarity is coming up for me uh in terms of seeing the future that you have for yourself which is really nice and i really love that for you uh this is really i'm it's it's it is very very nice for you uh you know this uh card is ruled by venus as you can see uh, the symbol of Venus all over her gown. So, uh, love. Okay. So love romance money too. money could be a big matter for you. Um, it could also be when you think about, uh, what's happening the week after or toward the end of the month with a full moon that we do have in Gemini, which is a whole other thing, but that does hit your second house of salary of, you know, finances, income and whatnot. But even still, I'm only saying that because you got three pedicle cards. Now, before we even get to other two, this is what you can expect during the new moon in Scorpio. So you got the seven of swords. Okay. So definitely, uh, uh, this is a time where there could be something that does happen where you do find out, uh, this new moon is definitely going to reveal a lot. So there could be something that you find out that there is, um, something just some, maybe someone doing, uh, something that is just not cool. OK, this card is attributed to like lying and cheating and stealing. So uh, keep that in mind. There could be something there. All right. There could be something there that happens around this new moon uh, with the Uranus opposition where it's surprising. But, you know, the irony of me doing these readings is like I'm telling you, so it should no longer be a surprise. Uh, but you never know where that's going to happen in your life. Now, here's the other thing. Should that not be a matter? It really is. It could just be you. Uh, really facing your truth now, because again, this is all about, okay, let me just break it down for you. This card is ruled by Aquarius. Aquarius rules your eighth house. Eighth house is ruled by Scorpio. <laughs> so you see uh, the connecting the dots here. And so remember, I said Scorpio, Scorpio season is all about going really deep. It has an intensity and it's all about, you know, connecting with your intuition. OK, and unlocking and revealing uh, secrets and also like your truths and truths that you may be hiding, things that you may be hiding from or do. I, so it may be you that has to also discover some truths that you may uh know that you're like okay i really have to deal with this uh or i have to you know uh not ignore this anymore okay this and again something may happen that uh it uh, inspires you this weekend to uh or around this time to really think about that now once you do hey you're good you got the ace of pentacles so this card is attributed to what you can expect okay that comes out of this new moon remember this new moon is a cycle so it looks like you are coming into something really big here something uh really big uh with especially because you just got the biggest pentacle in 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 tarot all right so you do see the golden pathway here with the archway really you know indicating it's a gateway. You're moving into, there is something new uh, regarding money or wealth, okay? Pentacles are physical or reality as well. And so uh, it just could be something uh, like something uh, like a material item or whatnot, uh, like a new car or a new house, uh, which, you know, could be a big thing for y'all. Uh, but yeah, you, you, you're good. You're really good here. Um, the fact that aces usher in this new change and new opportunities and new beginnings and so do new moons like you're 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 good you can expect uh, a lot of growth you can expect a lot of growth and then you know if a baby so some actually some of y'all maybe actually yeah so baby okay so there's uh some of y'all are actually congratulations if if you are and let me know if you are i want to congratulate you but yeah that's coming through uh but then hello so the fun part of this reading is that we are time traveling and I am pulling a card for April 23rd to the 24th when we have that corresponding full moon in Scorpio. So it completes the six month cycle. You're good. You're really, really, really good. The other thing that I want you to know is that um, some of y'all 
when I say that this new moon in Scorpio is in your fifth house, remember I said it's all about family and, and children. That is a big deal for y'all, especially because, you know, you, you are the native ruler of the fourth house anyway, that, you know, matters of the home, right? And really nurturing that. Uh, but there you go. I mean, not only is it raining pentacles in the form of the tree of life, you see their abundance here too. You see their abundance. You see how you started with the Nine of Pentacles and you got the Ten of Pentacles and the Ace of Pentacles. Uh, you're good. You're really good. And there's a lot of family energy attached to this, like inheritance as well. But the family energy is really big. You see three generations of family here, right? The old man, the uh, couple, and then the little child here in the corner. And then he's actually holding the tail of the dog. You see he's petting the dog. So it really is like a true like cycle, but, uh, yeah. So you can expect that, uh, during around the full moon, like there is a sense of like you, I mean, there's a lot of prosperity here. There's a lot of success here. I mean, look how big their castle is. Uh, but even still there is, uh, uh, it's like you, it's, I always say it's like the, you made it card, but there's so much comfort. There's, it's like, you're, you're you're good i mean there's everything here like big castle happy family a lot of comfort uh really like i mean the harvest as well like you're good you're you're absolutely good you can expect whatever happens around this new moon it's kicking off something really really new and nice for you and it can have to do with money and wealth uh and uh, or just something in your physical reality that is very prosperous very auspicious you're gonna have a lot of comfort in in april oh my goodness you're you're good but again this new moon just keep an eye out okay because the seven of swords is uh just really you know uh it can have to do with uh someone just doing something really sneaky or very machiavellian or just something surprising that just you're just like, I did not see that coming, okay? And remember, it's in your eighth house, so it can have to do with other people's money, all right? It can have to do with, like, your partner's income or, you know, inheritance, investments, uh, bonuses, commissions, like, something that has to do with debts. But, again, because it is in the eighth house, uh, it could just be you on this deeply transformative level where you have to face some of your fears and you can no longer hide from them and you have to, you know, face some truth now. That's what Scorpio season is. So, uh, but it, once you get past that, you're fine. You're 1000 percent. You see, it's like pentacles, pentacles, pentacles. It's you're good. You're good. I'm very excited for you and I want to be your friend too. So cancer, thanks so much. Hello, Leo. Okay, so for you, something is brewing at home. Okay, so this new moon in Scorpio is in your fourth house. That is your domestic sector. So uh, your actual home, some of y'all may be thinking of moving. Some of y'all uh, may be... Uh, that maybe that's a sign too, that, uh, you definitely need to hear this. Uh, some of y'all may be thinking of moving, renovating, uh, moving in with somebody. Uh, but there's also, you know, the fourth house is your, uh, it's family, it's children as well. Uh, even your significant other, your partner relationships, just think about your domestic life, uh, you know, foundations of life foundations in terms of home, but there could be something new, uh, that's definitely developing in this area in your life or will develop for, you know, in, 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 you know, soon, <laughs> soon, uh, with the Uranus opposition that is in your 10th house. Okay. So there is something there where again, this Uranus is, is, is all about surprises. So, uh, 10th house is your career. There could be something in terms of career that comes unexpectedly. Okay. Uh, and it could be, uh, pretty challenging. Uh, 10th house is also uh, social status, public recognition, uh, fame. If, 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 if you're famous, if you're Mick Jagger watching this video, Leo, right? Uh, so uh, there is, uh, it's also like honors, achievements, but uh, in any case, let's see what's going on for you, Leo, for uh, for this new moon, okay? This new moon in Scorpio, uh, it could also be something like in terms of like, maybe uh, things are really great at home, but you get called into work unexpectedly, uh, it, like maybe even over the weekend or just something that, that comes up that you just don't see coming. Anyway, Leo, let's get started, see uh, what's going on for you. Okay, so so, Leo, I'm doing a four card spread here, um, and we're going to really get into it. Okay, so, oh, interesting. Um, yeah, that's really great. Uh, very nice. So, Leo, um, interesting what we have here. So, okay, you got the hermit, which is really nice. I really like the fact that you did get the hermit. Um, 
the, uh, money is like a big thing for y'all. Okay. So this new moon in Scorpio, I want you to pay attention to that. It can have to do uh, money in terms of, you know, resources in terms of home as well. So there could be something with work related that is connected to something like maybe you want to buy a house or something there. But uh, even so you did get the hermit. This is, uh, you know, attributed to as the first card, what's been going on for y'all, uh, especially, you know, sure, recent past, but it really is more about Scorpio season uh how we've been in scorpio season for you know a couple weeks now really intense right really really intense it's, there it's already been activity with home for y'all that's mars and uh you know s the sun and you know even mercury was in scorpio for a while so any anyway it's it's uh it's a big thing here big thing uh you've definitely been ugh, really really uh i'm getting more of a message of like uh it's almost like forecasting. It's almost like y'all have been, it's like you're you're seeing further beyond now. You're looking further beyond, okay? You're not looking into like what's gonna happen tomorrow or, you know, uh, next week. It's almost like setting things in motion for, for, for like a big setup again, like foundations of life. For the hermit is all, it's like really deep uh, soul searching. But uh, what I, what's really interesting here, the reason I say money, obviously you got two pentacle cards, but the hermit is Virgo. Okay. And as we know, Virgo is your second house and second house is salary. It is finances. It is, you know, your income. So it could have been something that you've been reflecting on as well. Uh, you know, uh, again, resources uh, have to do with home and moving and, 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 you you know, possibly having children or, you know, something else that you want to do with, with family or, or your partner. Uh, there is um, also uh, a sense of uh, just really, really, really spending that time uh, thinking about like the things that you value as well. There's, you know, when you think about the second house, by the way, it isn't just money and, and, and salary and whatnot. It is, Oh, it is, uh, also like, um, you know, material possessions, which include home. Okay. Uh, but it also is, uh, you know, self-worth and self-value. So I really love the fact that the hermit did come up. You did get the two of pentacles. Okay. This is attributed to, uh, what you, uh, can, uh, what uh, you need could focus on right now with the new moon, what maybe, you know, this new moon may be illuminating for you. Uh, and it is something where you could feel a little tug of war uh, is something that I'm getting. Uh, you've been going through some things, Leo, you've been going through some things. Okay. Uh, but there is a little bit of a tug of war. I'm getting more of uh, it's like, you know, the two of pentacles really is all about imbalance. Uh, but it seems like things have been like maybe up and down for you. Uh, you can even see here in the card, you know, the pentacles are not even, even the waves are a little off. He's got a foot off the ground. It almost seems like whatever you're entering now with this new moon is truly new. It's almost like, uh, you're, you're evolving and there's this, uh, you've come to a point where there's something where it may be something that you've never had to really think about before. Uh, this may be a very brand new thing for you. Uh, just remember to keep that balance, keep that, you know, harmony, keep that, you know, just, just stay uh, uh, grounded. Uh, it's, it's really, really important for you to, and when I say talk about value, uh, self value is really something that is coming through as well. Okay. Uh, but with the two of pentacles here, there really could be something where it's almost like, uh, you may have to make a decision. Uh, and that may be something that you may be sitting on or just kind of where that tug of war energy is. Uh, but, uh, it looks like you're going to be absolutely fine. Uh, if you make the right decision, if you go with your intuition, always go with your intuition, Leo. All right. So, uh, you know, you did get the 10 of cups. So this is what you can expect, uh, coming out of this new moon. Uh, and you're good. You're good, Leo. You got the 10 of cups. Uh, as we know, this is a card of, uh, you know, what's really interesting. And this is why this is, I'm going to explain to you why your, your entire spread here is money. Okay. Um, but, Ten of Cups. Hey, this is happy family, happy couple. Okay. Happy children, happy everything that I just told you about how this new moon in, in Scorpio is in your fourth house of family, of children, of do you know, it's it's uh, like happy everything in this club, uh, card. Uh, it is the, uh, you know, the, 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 you see the cups aligned in the in the rainbow. It's a lot of enlightenment. It's indicating a promising future. Like you're on your way. Okay. Now, uh, the, what's really crazy about your reading, okay? So money is definitely going to be, uh, th or finances, um, because 
the as I explained, the hermit, Virgo, your second house, salary, money, income. And then you got a pentacles card, money, wealth, okay? And then now you got the ten of cups, which is by it's attributed to Pisces, which happens to be your eighth house. So you see that you're hitting the two money houses in astrology here. Eighth house is other people's resources, other people's income, other people's money. So it can be uh, inheritance, investments, uh, debts, paying off debts. Uh, it can be bonuses, commissions, uh, other people's money. Okay, even like uh, let, you know passive income, just, just something that's not salary. Uh, there's, but that's that's great. I mean, it's it's all very auspicious here. So you see, you have money, 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 as as the kids do, right? Right. Uh, I don't uh, I, I don't know these days. I don't know if that's uh, like not cool anymore. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is uh, you're good. You're good. Especially, as I said, this card is attributed to uh, uh, Pisces. Um, actually Jupiter and Pisces, which is even great. Uh, but remember, Saturn moved into Pisces, okay? So that is going to be, if you saw your weekly reading, Saturn moving into Pisces is a big deal. Saturn moved into Pisces earlier this year. It was only there for like a month or two before going retrograde for pretty much the entire year. Just went direct November 4th. So this is going to be big for you. This is going to be big for you because as you know, it the eighth house is other people's money, sure. But remember, if, if from my intro, Scorpio rules the eighth house, okay? Scorpio rules the eighth house. This, I, I, I can't even make that. I mean, I Scorpio rules. I mean, you got that, right? This is huge. This is huge. Uh, and that's all about transformation and, and, and cycles. And as you know, 10 is the end. One zero equals one new beginning. So this new moon could be very pivotal for you and really big for you. Now, lastly, you've got the four of pentacles. Uh, yeah, you did. Uh, very, very interesting, uh, because this card is attributed to the full moon in Scorpio that will happen April 23rd. We are time traveling now. We are going way, way in the future. Six months, okay? So remember, this new moon, mark it in your calendar. Whatever happens around this new moon, you're kicking off this new cycle. And there is, uh, it's, it, it's going to be connected to the full moon in Scorpio, uh, April 23rd, 24th, 2024. All right. As we know, as you, as I said, it's coming right after that Jupiter Uranus conjunction. It's really crazy, like packed. It's like a lot happening that week, but, um, remember full moons do bring conclusion. Okay. Now this is all about money here. This is all about money, but this is really just putting all your finances in order. So there is a sense of, uh, you just really like, it's a big money thing, but, um, it's really like, uh, it's more about like that financial stability pentacles. Sure. It's money and wealth too, but it's also like your physical pentacles are earthbound. So it's like, uh, your physical realm as well. And so, uh, again, it could be the fact that you do move and now you're, you know, by April, you are a little bit more conscious about spending and saving. And maybe you're uh, like, remember, I said this is like a big thing for you. Maybe you've never worked with mortgages and, you know, it's the first time doing a mortgage or what, you know, like there's so many possibilities. But around that time, it's almost like putting everything in order now. Um, you know, four is all about order. If it's, it's stability, right? If you think about four legs of a table. Okay. So it, it's that stability that comes with the four and with the pentacles, the four of pentacles. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a big, big week for you. Big week for you. Okay. Thanks so much, Leo. Hello, Virgo. Okay. So this new moon in Scorpio is in your third house. So what this means is that around this time for the new moon, there could be a lot of, uh, you know, energy. So, and that's something that's coming through is something that is almost like a new platform, like a new way of communicating, speaking. Uh, there's, it's almost like you're elevating in a sense, like being heard a little more. Uh, this is something that is going to be uh, pretty pivotal to you. There could be something that you're working on that requires a lot of research and writing too. Uh, you know, especially because the third house does rule like that as uh, in particular. Uh, it also, you know, if you have any siblings, 
uh, uh, aunts or cousins, like those like, relatives, those are all in the third house as well, um, as well as uh, neighbors. So, uh, you know, you could have new neighbors around this time. It's, uh, it could be a thing. Or there could be something like, you know, I don't know, maybe you have a crush on a neighbor and, you know, you develop a you know relationship with them or there's just something around that uh, with the third house. Now, this is where it gets really interesting, okay? The third house rules short distance travel. And so there could be something uh, uh, brewing around that, uh, around short distance travel. Uh, and what's really interesting about this is that uh, Uranus, the Uranus opposition that is happening in Taurus, that is your ninth house, and the ninth house rules travel as well. Uh, that is more long distance. That's more, you know, foreign travel. So you, uh, they're they're both hitting, you know, the two travel houses in the zodiac wheel. So there could be something around travel that comes up that could be really like, ah, uh, like what happened. So uh, just be very aware of that. Uh, if you are traveling, uh, there, you know, could be, uh, you know, it could feel like a mercury retrograde situation like maybe a flight delay or yeah, there could be something unexpected and you're like what what just happened or you could just have like i don't know maybe like a visit from a sibling that you just didn't expect but even still uh you know uranus in, in your ninth house um that is something that is uh also uh kind of like your belief system uh your philosophies the way that you see things it's also like higher education it's education uh so keep that in mind that may be uh something uh that something surprising happens around this time uh regarding that okay so um the and, but also just you know the big bigger picture here is there could be something travel related something travel related uh whether it is long distance or short distance and the ninth house is you know when i say long distance travel uh it's it's if you're not traveling at all uh, which a lot of y'all might be is looking at what's going on for y'all. Uh, it is uh, just maybe like, you know, you work with like people in different countries or overseas or whatnot. And there could be some sort of like urgent communication situation or hello, like, uh, or, you know, an email that you're supposed to write back. And now everyone's really mad because you didn't write that email back or, you know, you just never know with the earnest. You never know with the earnest. But the bigger picture here is something about your belief system, uh, or or even like your philosophies or it could be something that you see that makes you see things maybe like differently uh could be a thing but in any case virgo let's get to it let's see what's going on for you for uh this new moon in scorpio so virgo um i'm doing a four card spread and uh we are going to take a look and see what's going on for you are good. You're really good, Virgo. Okay, so uh, you got the Emperor. Um, hi. Yeah, you did. Uh, this card is attributed to everything, uh, kind of like it is like, I, I want to say recent past. It's more what's been happening during Scorpio season. Okay, so for the past week or so, but uh, you've been powering up. You, I mean, you've got the emperor. Okay, this is really like, come on. There's a lot of wisdom in this card, a lot of authority in this card, a uh, lot of just, oh, like that feel good energy of like, I've got things out of control. I'm laying down the law. I'm setting boundaries. Like you're, 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 you're good here. Okay. There could have to do something with, uh, 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 you know, this is, well, the emperor's really masculine energy is like divine masculine, but it's also like, you know, it could be like a father figure or even a father. There could be something like that's been, uh, like, uh, your mind's been on that as well. But even still, this is really great. Um, I really love this for you because it is, uh, you know, there's uh, you know, the emperor. There's so much passion that comes with the emperor, but you know, more, more, more than anything, like a lot of power, a lot of power. Um, and what's really interesting here is that the emperor is, um, you know, Aries, and you know, you even see the rams in his throne. So, uh, as you know, or maybe you don't, that's why I'm here to tell you, your north node moved into uh, Aries over July in your eighth house. What are the chances? You know, I said in the intro that Scorpio rules the eighth house. 
I mean, this is transformative. This is really like that transformative energy. Uh, just really that empowerment energy is really strong. And that's what happens during Scorpio season too. Like I said, it's just like feeling a lot more empowered and uh, it could be like really intense, but uh, it's almost like the things that you are going through are making you feel a lot more like in control. Okay. Now, which you love, Virgo. You love. I'm a Virgo uh, moon. Hey, you got the three of pentacles. Okay. You got the three of pentacles. That's amazing. This card is attributed to what you can uh, expect or even focus on with the actual new moon. Okay. Uh, it looks like you, I mean, I'm not like you, you, you're, you're good here. You're really, really good. I mean, you're, it's like, you're putting things in order. Uh, you, uh, it looks like you are, uh, I mean, what did I just say earlier? Uh, so when I said this new moon of Scorpio is in your third house, third house of communication, you just got the card where it is first of all a three. Okay. Uh, but this is all that teamwork. And this is like, you can't communicate. Uh, you have, you, when you communicate, you communicate with other people. So there is a sense of like bringing people into uh, your world uh, now. Okay. So it could be something with travel and uh, it could be something with, you know, starting to work with your siblings or neighbors or aunts and uncles or whatnot. But there is also, you know, uh, just you becoming a lot more communicative again you people listening to you but there's a collaborative energy that comes with the three of pentacles and pentacles are money and wealth so a lot of y'all could be uh entering new jobs or maybe even uh doing something where you're collaborating with others for the first time you could be uh even working on projects uh by yourself uh you know i've i've i think i've mentioned this in one of your readings because you do have jupiter in Taurus as well in your ninth house and the ninth house also does rule publishing so I've made this analogy or it's not even an analogy but just as a reference you know what if if you are writing a book and a lot of Virgos probably are with the fact that you have all this activity in your ninth house of publishing or even starting a website I mean that could be something too but uh or just something with with writing but uh if you're working on a book you're working alone but you got to work with an agent. You got to work with an editor. You got to work. Do you know what I mean? Like that's uh, that's it's like still working with others. OK, a lot of success here. A lot of success that comes with this teamwork. So uh, and then three is all about new. It's all about the creation. It's 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 sure it's growth. It's it's advancement and whatnot. But it's really bringing that newness in your life. So you just got the three of pentacles in, you know, for what's true to, to the new moon. All right. So there is some new opportunity coming through and it looks like it's really big because this card is attributed to what to expect for this new moon cycle. And you are just on this brand new journey. You just got the fool. And as you know, the fool is like where you're starting the fool's journey. OK, they're the major. You, I mean, like you're just on you're on a brand new journey. Your life is changing. I mean, big time. Big time. So if you feel like you're in a place where you're just like, maybe like, what do I do? What do I do? It, it, take that risk. Okay. Take that risk. Uh, I think that you will. I feel like you are going to be in a place where you're wanting to take risks, especially what's been happening the past like four to five months. Um, and the fact that you do, you know, have the emperor here. Um, very interesting. Very interesting, especially because, you know, the emperor is so confident and, uh, you know, came up in your past. But uh, speaking of writing books, actually, the emperor is, uh, uh, you know, it, like I said, it's all about authority, right? When you break down that word, when you take it back to its etymological root, it's from, and we're going way back, okay, Latin, like, autorite, author. So the word authority comes from author, okay? And so this is you being the author of your own story now. This is you, like, really, really... You, when I say powering up, it's like, I got this, bam, I'm moving forward. Like, this is really great. The full, uh, this, again, I mean, you see the full abundance of the sun, uh, which, by the way, I, look at the, you know, when you when the full comes up, I want you to read F-O-O-L, the full, as F-U-L-L -L as well, okay? Because it really does bring, like, this fullness in life, okay? Uh, there's so much innocence in this card and opportunity in this card. And it's such a, you're, you're, you're good because Ace of Pentacles. Now, this card is attributed to, and time traveling here, way into the future, April 23rd, 2024. 
Okay. April 23rd, 24th, depending on where you live, but April 23rd. Uh, 2024 is when we have the corresponding full moon in Scorpio. And so whatever you do now, it looks like will be extremely successful because that full moon in Scorpio in April 2024 is the conclusion, uh, the culmination of what, what happens now. I mean, it looks like you're all set up. <laughs> you are set up because aces usher a new change too so whatever you do now it seems like yeah sure something's gonna you know come to a culmination but it doesn't mean something is going to end it means that uh it could it could be like the ascension of something that you've been working on or you know uh back to the book reference if you're working on a book and working with agents it's the at you sold the book at that point so that's that next phase do you see how this works okay but aces usher in new change, new beginnings, new opportunities. I mean, you uh, and, and pentacles, this is the biggest pentacle in the deck. It's money and wealth here. OK, also your physical realm, your, your physical world, your, you know, it's uh, material uh, wealth as well. So like, you know, maybe a brand new house at that time or something. But even still, uh, this is uh you're good. I mean, all the newness, like shining from your from your spread here. Remember, you have the three of pentacles, new, the full, new, ace of pentacles, new. And then you have the emperor, like all that empowerment to, to you know, really kick this off uh, to be confident and, and to really take charge and, and, and ensure that, you know, all this happens. Uh, you're good, Virgo. So, uh Good job. I, I don't even know what to say. This is really amazing. Uh, okay, great. Thank you so much, Virgo. Okay, Libra, this new moon in Scorpio is going to be really big. And if you are here for money, there's a lot of money activity happening, especially because this new moon in Scorpio is in your second house of money, of salary, of finances, of your income, right? So uh, the second house is also like material possessions. There could be something new coming through. Uh, it, it could be, you know, something like, a, you know, a new car or, you know, that uh, uh, toaster you've been eyeing whatever it is whatever you do Libra whatever uh makes you happy but the second house is also self-worth self-value that comfort level that comes with that you know uh, a lot of stability energy uh but really just feeling like confident in what you do but this new moon is 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 definitely gonna a lot of y'all are possibly getting uh moving into this next stage in your life okay uh and it can have to do with a new job it can have to do like income stream uh something a promotion but something with like money there is something money there now it can also come through uh through other people's money and the reason i say that is because coincidentally uranus the planet that is opposing the planet of surprises, right? That's opposing Mars, the sun and, and the new moon is in Taurus in your eighth house. And so that's other people's resources. That's shared resources. So that's investments. That's inheritance. That's, you know, your partner's income. That's paying off debts. That's, you know, bonuses, uh, uh, commissions. That's you. So it, it you have everything that's happy this week this uh, for this new moon in Scorpio. Uh, it's like your two money houses. It's the two money houses of the Zodiac wheel so uh definitely could be something there in terms of money that you can uh expect but you know with uranus you know being naughty uh it could be something surprising with other people's resources okay uh shared resources around this time okay something unexpected but uh if that does not apply to you it really could be uh as i explained in the intro uh eighth house is not only other people's resources and shared resources it is you know scorpio rules eighth house so it's just a new cycle that's happening for you. Uh, and it, it, it's transformation, okay? And there's a lot of depth in the eighth house. So there really could be something that is truly transformative for you around this new moon. It really could be really big. It really could be really big. Uh, don't forget the... Um, we've had a lot of things happening for you, Libra. Okay, South Node moving into your sign uh, in July. Uh, North Node moving into Aries. That was your seventh house of partnerships. Um, uh, we had that uh, new moon solar eclipse in your sign. I mean, there was a lot happening for y'all. Okay, so uh, let's see what's going on for you, Libra, for this new moon and Scorpio. See what you can uh, expect around 
this time with uh uh yeah which sets up a cycle for this uh next six months okay so libra i'm doing a four uh card spread uh and we shall see what uh we can expect for uh whoa. oh you know what's really funny is that uh well a you're good uh, actually you're better than good you're gr you're gooder than <laughs> um you're gooder than good um you're you're great actually libra you're great uh wow i this is huge uh okay let's get started you got the king of swords uh you're not messing around anymore you're not messing around so this card is attributed to what's been going on over scorpio season for you okay uh so the past few weeks or or, or whatnot and it seems like it's just like you are really just uh you have to you're putting on your serious face now and you're just like i've gone through so much even scorpio season is really intense for you okay so it's now you're just like no more no more bs i i i, I there are things that i want nothing's going to stop me uh no one's going to you know manipulate me in any way uh, that's what the king of swords is here for he has so much power he has so much authority this is your bff by the way king of swords is aquarius your fellow air sign so uh really like this for you it's like you're you just want to have fun now you just want to have fun you want to socialize you want to be you you've it's almost like there's been um uh, a lot of things that happened that uh have really made you step up and say no more I, i've got to like take control i've got to take control uh and i really love that for you i mean the king of swords is um you i say it all the time like think about the medieval times right if you were summoned by this king if you lived in that time period this is the king that makes you like shake at the knees he's he's very he's the only king that looks directly at you okay nothing like when i say truly nothing to hide even yourself like facing all your truths okay now you got the hanged man. Uh, this card is attributed to the new moon. Like what to expect around this time, what to focus around this time, like with this new moon. Uh, and the hanged man, hey, comes right before the death card. And the death card is ruled by Scorpio. And it is all about that transformation. So this is someone who is preparing himself for that transformation. You're go I've like, you've do it. So do it no surrender and actually you know what it's so funny because the hangman is someone who does make all these sacrifices uh really goes within um and and, and makes that surrender for the things that no longer serves him well as you know it's almost like you moving forward with this new moon and you know for for this you know the next few weeks and next few months it's like you really just want to have this deeply profound transformative experience and but a lot of it is fueled by uh it's almost like you want it's like you're on this rocket ship now it's almost like you it's like the things that it's just things have been so intense um and for a lot of libras maybe a little bit of tug of war energy a lot of just like i don't know what to do a lot of like stress energy but now it's like uh focus on having that i mean this is a very spiritual card so it's focusing on uh it's going inward but you see that he actually put himself there okay you see the halo around his head so a lot of enlightenment and so when i said he's preparing himself for this big transformation truly take this time during this new moon to uh to surrender the things that no longer serve you well uh even make some sacrifices if you need to uh uh, uh in terms of what is holding me back okay so i can move forward now you got the two of cups i love this for you libra you come on come on it looks like a lot of y'all are moving into a place of um partnerships is a big thing for you okay uh this is a card of uh you know in in layman's terms like the true love card the twin flame card the soulmate card uh and this can apply to uh work it can apply to actual love in terms of your you know a significant other romance um it could even be like platonic friendship or whatever there is this merging right it's like uh what's it like aristotle i say it all the time uh uh he's you know back in the fifth century he did say uh love is composed of uh two souls inhabiting the same body so uh that's what this is uh this is it, it i mean you're good and what's really interesting is that 
as I mentioned earlier, the North Node moving into Aries back in July, this is a thing that's going to happen for the next year for you. A lot of focus, the, your North Node, your destiny. Moving into your seventh house, that's your partnership, partnerships and relationships. So it looks like there is like almost like a new perspective you're going to have around this new moon in terms of, you know, uh, partnerships, relationships. Uh, but there really is like a lot of like uh, I'm getting a lot of uh, a good balance of, of, of mind, body, soul, all of that just moving forward uh just again just let go of the things that you don't need and it looks like you will you know especially with the king of, king of swords but you can expect this for this next cycle okay for for you know with the new moon in in scorpio uh and that's when we get to we're going really deep into the future now april 23rd 2024 the corresponding full moon in Scorpio, okay? So this new moon in Scorpio, six months later, we have that culmination to it. And so whatever kickstarts, whatever is going to uh, transpire or come about or this new opportunity, new beginning that's happening around this new moon in Scorpio for you, you're good, okay? So as you know, full moons bring a uh, culmination to something. It's, it's, it's like conclusion of something. And it's everything that you had wished for. I mean, you just got the star. So by April 2024, like you're, 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 good, you're fine. You're good. <laughs> you're going to be absolutely good. You're going to be absolutely fine. It's almost like, uh, Everything that you've gone through has made you a stronger person. Um, and it's really like just just prepare for uh, big partnership energy. Now, if you're not here for partnership for love or career or any of that, or even like friends or any, if you live alone in, you know, the the great Smoky Mountains or whatever, and, and you're happy with that, this, you know, a lot of self-love too, okay? A lot of self-love. Remember what I said, this new moon in Scorpio in your second house of self-worth, self-confidence, uh, uh, self-value. So you just having that confidence boost in yourself, like whatever happens is, and it could be very, uh, a very spiritual, you know awakening for you as well uh but again it's like all the stars aligning for you everything that uh is happening now is for everything to align for you uh six months from from now yeah you're good you're 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 really good and you know what the the crazy thing is um is that you have the well the king of swords is aquarius like i said the star is ruled by aquarius now aquarius again your bff and i'm an aquarius too so we're 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 tight libra we're tight uh this uh, the aquarius pluto is moving into aquarius uh in january for 20 years this is going to be a big thing okay really big thing now this is huge because the star ruled by Aquarius is your fifth house of love, of romance, of pleasure, of creativity, of self-expression, of, of, of uh, there's like that freedom that, that comes with uh, Aquarius. But it's also like family and children. I mean, there's so many. I mean, the, the fifth house is such a nice house. It's such a great house but you could have a kid by then too um if that's something that y'all looking for just saying okay but uh yeah you're good uh you're you're absolutely good i you're you're good there's really like mm, uh it really is just you know again the eight uh the hangman very like spiritual energy with that and then uh with uh, uh uranus in uh opposition uh, over this new moon, there could be just something that really, uh, you know, because it's in your eighth house and it's deeply transformative, uh, really just let your intuition guide you around this time and you're going to be absolutely fine. So, uh, Libra, you're amazing. Thanks so much. Okay, Scorpio. So as you know, this new moon is, if you haven't heard already, it's in your sign. Okay. This is really big. Your life is changing. Your life is changing, and I'm very excited for you, especially thinking about, like, what, again, like, Scorpios have, like, been going through the ringer. But things have just been, you know, I'd even say the past few months, like, things have started to improve for y'all. Uh, this new moon is kicking off a new cycle. The, it's in your first house. This is you. This is you. The role that you play. This is, you know, your identity. It's, again, uh, also, like, um, you know, it is, like, your physical body as well. So there could be some attention around that. But there is, like, new you, new you. Uh, wait. 
Is that what I meant? No, new moon, new you uh, energy around this. Uh, now, with Uranus, by the way. So Uranus is in opposition to the new moon. Uh, and it happens to be in your seventh house of partnerships and relationships. So there could be some sort of tiffle tuffle around partnerships, relationships that you do not see coming. OK, uh, I mean, obviously, the irony is, is like I'm letting you know now. So you may be prepared uh, and you may see it coming, but there could be some. You know, it, it really depends on your birth chart. It can be just think in terms of, you know, you'll you'll know when it happens. Uh, it can be work related. It can be uh, domestic related, you know, like your uh, significant other or partner. But, you know, partnerships, like, even if, you know, for instance, uh, you know, if you're like house hunting or whatnot, you're working with a realtor. That's a partnership. If you, you know, writing a book and, and working with like a, 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 you know, seeking an editor or something, that's a partnership. So think about, you know, where where it, it may be uh where all that energy lies again you may just feel it with this your uranus opposition but with that said scorpio let's see what's going on for you for the new moon in your sign scorpio this is um I'm not going to lie. This is a big one. This is a big new moon. There's a lot happening uh, with this new moon. So with that said, Scorpio, let's see what's going on for you. All right. So I'm doing a uh, four um, card spread. And so, uh, well, yeah, you're good. You're really, really good. There is going to be um, a lot of, you know. Uh, OK, so let's 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 uh, let's do this. Uh got the magician and so um hello amazing so when i say things have been improving for y'all it seems like a lot of you have just started this new journey i mean you just got the magician in the part of your spread that's attributed to uh uh i would say recent past but it's more of just a focus on scorpio season so like the past week or so um uh, past few weeks, but this is, uh, well, past three weeks actually, but, uh, yeah. So you've had some new beginnings. Let's just keep it that way, especially with the magician here. Uh, but you know, the great thing here is that looking at it, it seems like you've just taken a lot of action too. You've put a lot of action effort into this new thing that you want for yourself. As you know, the magician card number one, right? So we're really just kicking off the hero's journey, the, the you know, the fool's journey, right? So your journey. So there is a sense of, you just having really put all your you know heart and soul into this thing that you really want to uh uh, uh it, it's it's almost like you've already had your new moon moment uh it's, it's a kind of like a big message coming through like there's already been like some great new things happening for y'all um and they're continuing they're they're gonna continue especially because you got the nine of um cups here and so this card is attributed to what you can expect or focus on um with this new moon in particular and as you can see you're good <laughs> i mean you're good so uh you're this is uh the wish come true card right this is the genie in a bottle energy that's what i call it uh you can even see him sitting there like a genie uh you see the cups aligned over his head so what's really great about this is almost uh, it's it is a card of satisfaction I mean, this is, you know, being emotional, it's that emotional fulfillment that really stands out that comes up with this card. So I for really love this for you. Uh, it's like things are going your way in this new moon. It's almost like, again, something that you've really wanted, like your hopes and wishes. It's, it's starting to manifest and starting to unfold and you are on this new journey already and Things are really great. I, 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 I'm very excited for you. Um, and you should be very proud of yourself, too. You should definitely be very proud of yourself. Now, you did get the two of swords. OK, so this card is attributed to what you can expect uh, coming out of this new moon. So part of this cycle that this new moon uh, is is we're approaching. All right. So uh, you did get the two of swords. So it seems like it's just going to be a lot of introspection. And so I'm not really surprised because you uh, again, you rule the eighth house, which is like that uh, very deeply introspective and 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 uh, uh just a transformative energy uh has a lot of depth okay has a lot of uh even emotional depth but there could be uh just uh 
it could just be you just spending a lot of time uh, really getting to know yourself. And I want you to do that too. I, you know, I want you to spend some time really having that moment. It seems like your this journey is so new that you're going to be doing it anyway. A lot of reflecting, uh, in a lot of going within. Uh, to be honest, uh, it again, um partnerships and relationships could be a big thing for you now and you may be thinking about it it could be there's a lot happening here so uh especially uh when you think about the fact that mercury uh i'm sorry not mercury uh north node moved into uh uh well let me just tell you okay so uh this card is attributed to moon and libra so um Libra is a native ruler of partnerships and relationships that really could be a big thing for you now, especially because Uranus and Jupiter is in your seventh house of partnerships and relationships. OK, so there could be something that, uh, you know, there it, it's, you know, one message that does come up is like, don't take things for granted. Uh and I'm not saying that you would, but it is something just appreciate everything that is happening in your life. Uh, take that time. Re remember to, to just really go within and explore that, you know, your emotional side and, and how things are uh, moving along for you. Uh, but again, this this is absolutely great. OK, so there could be some focus on partnerships, relationships here. Uh, especially because that's already a big thing happening for you anyway. But definitely take that time to, to spend uh, really going within to the point where you're comfortable taking off this blindfold and it could be take it could take a you know uh you know for some scorpios just you know a day or two for some scorpios it could take many months because you like it right you like that it you do rule the eighth house but uh this is really great now you also got the three of pentacles now we are time traveling here we're this card is attributed to april 23rd 2024 okay when we have the full moon in Scorpio. So that full moon in Scorpio that's happening April 23rd, 24th, depending on where you live uh, in the world, it is uh, it's corresponding to this new moon in Scorpio. And so it looks like whatever it is, there's a lot of collaboration uh, that's happening around that time. Uh, so this is three is all about uh, 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 kind of like the new moon, uh, new beginnings. Like uh, three is all about creation. It's all about new things. It's all about like the birth of new things. And, you know, it is growth and advancement and maturation as well. But uh, this is a card of teamwork. This is a card of bonding. This is a card of working with others. Um, so yeah it seems like there is a level of like ascension um it's almost like you know how full moons bring like culmination to something um it it's almost like one phase of of this is uh completing but it's just like ascending on the next level okay so um i really love this um, one analogy I made in another, in another reading is it's kind of like, if you are like, you know, working on a book, for instance, like you're writing a book, uh, it's almost like this is the time that you're writing the book. You just started the book. And then six months from now, this is that next step. It's like, it, it gets old or, you know, an editor or a publishing house like buys it or, or whatever. There is some collaborative energy that you can expect. It's a very auspicious card, uh, around that time that is going to, uh, unfold, uh, that corresponds to this new moon in Scorpio. So, uh, yeah, I, you're good. <laughs> Scorpio, you're good. Oh my gosh. My dorky love. Anyway, you're, you're really good here. All right. Thanks so much, Scorpio. All right, Sagittarius. So this new moon in Scorpio for you, very interesting. It's very interesting because this new moon in Scorpio is going to be in your 12th house. The 12th house is your subconscious. So hidden things. Okay. Uh, what is the subconscious? It's where we store our memories. Okay. Uh, so that even includes like low frequency energies, like facing fears now is what it is. Okay. Facing fears or any doubts, really unrooting things. Uh, it, 12th house is also dreams pay attention to your dreams they could be telling you uh, uh things intuition as well so really interesting placement for you there could be some sense of uh you just uh possibly coming over uh, like overcoming something that uh is is for some maybe like deeply rooted but really moving forward really moving forward in that capacity so uh again um 
there is the 12th house is also associated with like self-sabotage so if that has been something that uh you have been subconsciously doing it may come to an end now okay and there's this new uh something to to look forward to with this new moon now with uranus in opposition to the new moon uh uh among any uh, other planets is uh that's in your sixth house so Something surprising could happen in terms of the sixth house is everyday activities. It's your routine. So something that you are so used to doing. Okay. There, uh, so it could like, literally be anything. However, it's narrowed down a little bit more because it does include work as well, like work and labor and whatnot. So there is something that could be uh, surprising that comes up in terms of that uh, projects that you're working on. Uh, this sixth house is also health. Uh, matters so there could be something regarding health matters so you know don't uh you know walk like on you know construction sites where people are you know it's active um around this time uh but also uh uh it, it really is you know when i say health uh, like fitness programs as well so you know just be careful of a gym gym or whatnot or maybe if you're doing a yoga class like a really advanced one uh you think about it okay maybe do it next week but uh in any case uh let's see what's going on for you sagittarius for this new moon in scorpio again uranus is going to have an impact on your sixth house and this new moon in scorpio is in your 12th house okay so uh very interesting placements and we are going to see what is going on for you um and i'm going to do a six of six uh four card uh spread here um well you, yeah you're good <laughs> you're good um there is going to be something okay let me just get started you okay you got the king of cups okay so uh really nice i like it I like the fact that you got the King of Cups. And what's even more uh, exciting about the King of Cups showing up is that this card is attributed to what's been happening like through Scorpio season, okay? So for the past few weeks, all right? So what's been going on with you and King of Cups is Scorpio. So, uh, but the King of Cups is like kind of like that really loving king. He's got a huge heart. He cares about everybody in his kingdom, in his empire, in his family. A lot of self love here as well. I actually really love the fact that, you know, the King of Cups showed up. Uh, king of Cups is also like really highly intuitive. Uh, so you could have, again, with the fact that this new moon, and or sorry, uh, Scorpio season, like the past few weeks, like, has been in your 12th house and there's been so much intensity there you could have been doing a lot of diving deep really even like psychoanalyzing things like uh really really thinking about a lot of things in your life okay but uh it's almost like in a sense like uh in a good way, in a loving way, in a way where it's just like uh, helping you uh, become a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, bringing a lot more self-love, self-care, uh, but also the people around you, the people in your world, within your kingdom, um, your kingdom, within your uh orbit okay so well maybe you you do have a kingdom who knows who knows i don't know who you know who knows uh more power to you if you do but uh this is really great uh key and cops again just very just nice flow of love in this card i really love it and then you got the queen of swords uh now this card is attributed to what you can expect uh or maybe even focus on around like what this new moon is hap what's happening around this time with the new moon so queen of swords it's just like now it's like you've gone through a lot of emotions you've had some moments uh and now it's time to just like like I'm not playing anymore. I'm getting serious about what I want. I'm getting serious about what I, what I want. Uh, really stepping up. Uh, a lot of empowerment energy, as I explained, that happens around this new moon in Scorpio and even just the uh, new uh, Scorpio season in general. But uh, this is really like, honestly, like with the Queen of Swords, um, really great. A lot of power. Again, a lot of authority. You got two core cards here. Uh, and I really love this for you. This is absolutely amazing, actually. Queen of Swords, two things here. Uh, one thing is that there could be a focus in terms of partnerships, relationships. Queen of Swords is Libra. If you think about... Um, 
how the North, uh, the South Node moved into Libra uh, in July. So that's been a big thing for you. Uh, there could be also uh, uh, there's. It's almost like there is a different way you're seeing a friendship, or maybe even a group you belong to, an organization you belong to. South Node in Libra was your eleventh house, so. Uh, that could be coming up around this new moon, but there is a lot of fairness with the Queen of Swords, a lot of like, you know, just being headstrong, okay? There's no water in this card, as opposed to the King of Cups, Queen of Swords, no water. And, you know, the reason for that is because, uh, you know, she's left all emotions at the door because she doesn't want her emotions to cloud her judgment. So really just seeing things for what they are uh, and, and, and hearing the truth, knowing the truth, wanting the truth, nothing but the truth. Uh, but a lot of power with the Queen of Swords. I really like that. You have all this empowerment energy already. Now, you have the Nine of Pentacles. Now, this card is attributed to, attributed to what you can expect with this cycle that's coming with this new. So what to, what's to expect uh with this new moon and for months to come um so uh you're good <laughs> you have the nine of pentacles uh so really love this for you sagittarius they really really love this for you um you can see that well here's what's really great about this is that well first you can see that this is um uh, a lot of abundance here okay it's a lot of pentacles a lot of abundance uh really like self-sufficiency energy uh that comes with this card a lot of financial independence like there is you just like writing high in terms of like work and career and i say that because this card is attributed to venus and virgo virgo is your 10th house okay and so remember i said with jupiter and uranus and taurus which is your sixth house that's already a big thing for you like work the uh, work matters okay or even just your passions. Now, it looks like you're taking it all to the next level. Like you are going to feel this abundance. And it's, again, very, very nice for you. Um, so, uh, and of course, uh, uh, ruled by Venus. So, I mean, there's a lot of love matters here. There's, you know, money is a big thing, obviously, because it's pentacles. Pentacles are earthbound, so it's your physical reality as well, your physical realm. But there could be something, uh, like, really uh, coming through. Like, it could be, like, uh, something that you really want, uh, something that you really love and want to nurture, uh, like, a new plant or a new uh car whatever it is okay so uh but this again very very nice uh and this is you by the way having worked hard to get to this point like you've earned it so be very very proud of yourself now this card is attributed to uh we're going f far now we're going far okay april 23rd 2024 the full moon in scorpio so that full moon in Scorpio, April 2024, corresponds to the new moon in Scorpio that's happening now. And so, as you know, full moons bring that conclusion, that uh, uh, culmination to things, okay? So, uh, very interesting, you pulled a, a Sagittarius card. <laughs> this is actually attributed to moon in Sagittarius, but even still, uh, it looks like uh, it's whatever is... Uh, uh, kind of brewing for you now. There is uh, almost like this empowerment energy uh, that's, and I'm even like doubling down on that, especially because it is Scorpio season. It is a new moon. And then you have these two core cards. You have the Queen of Swords. Uh, almost like there is uh, like just cutting all the fat now, cutting all the fat, cutting through all the noise to just really focus on your goals uh, and what you want. Um, and it will bring you all this abundance and it's going to be well worth it because it seems like, you know, the nine of wands is all about like this resilience energy. So it can be uh, something that is, you know, by that time in the full moon, it's like, OK, that was like uh, a wild ride. Um, and uh, it, but I'm, you know, I'm I'm still here. I'm still here. Because this card is, you know, all about perseverance, too. OK, so it's you see him standing in front of the wands. And even though he's gone through it, he's, you see bandage on his head. He's saying, don't even think about taking my wands, my passions. Don't even think about that. I've worked hard for this. I've earned this. No one's going to take it away from me. Um, so I really love this for you, Sagittarius. Uh, you're good. You're good. All right. Thanks so much, Sagittarius.
All right, Capricorn, so this new moon in Scorpio is in your 11th house. So this is your social network. It's your groups you belong to, organizations you may belong to, even social media, if that's a thing for you. Uh, 11th house is also your hopes and wishes. It's really interesting. I mean, if you think about ancient astrology, it's the reason why it's grouped together, uh, like the people that you know uh, and your hopes and wishes is because it's the people you know that uh, tend to make your hopes and wishes come true. And so uh, it can go in so many ways here. So it's very exciting to have the new moon in Scorpio in your 11th house. Okay. So always be social, always be networking. It is your network here. We're talking about now this, uh, with the Uranus opposition, this happens to be in your fifth house. Okay. So the fifth house is a house of pleasure. It's a house of love. It's a house of romance and recreation, uh, family, children, uh, self-expression, even procreation. So there could be something, uh, it's, it ultimately like th th what brings you joy and fun. Uh, so there could be something surprising that comes in regard to, uh, uh, this area of your life. Okay. So, uh, could be something unexpected could again, be something that you did not see coming. Uh, it really could be something where, you know, you are, you know, with this new moon in Scorpio, maybe you're starting a group maybe you are starting a band maybe you are you know what starting uh some sort of like club like i love the uh i love the uh, uh the green uh uh bells on my uh you know front porch club whatever it is you do you you do you okay so capricorn uh and then uh, but during this time it's like there's something that uh you know uh, where you may feel like this really big creative block uh, with Uranus, you know, because it is in your fifth house of creativity and, you know, self-expression, maybe something like where you feel like you can't express yourself. But uh, and again, it, it really is going to be a surprising, okay? It is going to be something that maybe a little unexpected, maybe uh, just uh, keep, an, uh, keep an eye out for it. All right. So with that said, Capricorn, let's see what's going on for you for this uh, new moon in Scorpio that is happening in your 11th house with the uh, Uranus opposition happening in your fifth house. So Capricorn, I'm just doing a four card spread here um, to see what is going on for you. And oh my gosh, <laughs> you're good. You're good. Okay. So I, come on, let's, you know, let's not even mess around here. Let's, 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 let's talk about this. Uh, some of y'all are having babies, but let's, okay. So you did get the night of once. This card is attributed to uh, what's been happening during Scorpio season. Okay, so the past few weeks, uh, really, uh, you know, kind of like recent past, but again, really big focus on Scorpio season. Uh, and you got the Knight of Wands. So, hello, uh, you're good. <laughs> you're good. Uh, it's just really just, uh, you know, uh, Knights are very active. Okay, and so this is just following your passions, uh, really going for it though. Like nothing can stop you now. Okay. Nothing can stop. I look at the horse completely reared up, ready to go. Like this is, I love this. Okay. This is really fiery energy. All right. Especially knights are fire. Ones are fire. It's double fire. Look at the plume come out of his helmet. I mean, real like good stuff, good stuff. Okay, so there could be some stuff that you've just been really passionate about, uh, really transformative energy that comes with a Knight of Wands. All right, so uh, already uh, that's already happening with Scorpio season. So I really love that for you. Now you got the Knight of Swords. You got two knights here. Uh, the Knight of Swords is attributed to what is uh, what you can expect with this new moon uh, around this time, around this weekend, and it looks like again a lot of you just being active just uh just really really being active uh the knight of swords is also well the knight of swords is you know very different from the knight of wands but they're still they're both like very active the knight of swords more swords are the mental suit uh so it's like it seems like there is some sort of like clarity that you're gonna have around this time uh something that is uh you know a sense of like <sighs> Well, a, 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 a big freedom energy coming through. Okay. So I already love that for you. But, you know, with the Knight of Swords here, uh, there is 
a transformative quality to him. But again, it's more of like a mental thing, like seeing things in a new way. There could be something that, uh, and also being very bold, very bold, like boldly going uh, toward the things that you want. Like again, with him, same thing, like just very active, uh, really, really uh, even going into the storm. Uh, so it's almost like this fearlessness that you have with, you know, around this new moon. So whatever happens with the Uranus, it's almost like water off a, off a duck's back for you. It's like, I got this. I got this. Uh, and you also got the Ace of Cups. You're good. <laughs> You're really good. This card is attributed to what you can expect uh, to come out of the, you know, new moon in Scorpio. So we're talking about the next few months here, or, you know, even like up to half a year or so, uh, ace of cups, uh, aces usher in new change. Okay. Out of the minor arcana, they usher in the most new change, new beginnings, new opportunities, new paths, new journeys, uh, coinciding with a new moon. I mean, and cups, emotions, love, feelings, everything that, you know, uh, this is really big, especially because, uh, like I said, um, you know, you already have Jupiter in your fifth house of love. And so this is really great. A lot of self-love here, but truly um, something new. Again, something new is brewing and it can be relationship. Uh, it can be even like a relationship with yourself. Again, that self-love energy. But there is something new that this card when it comes up is that rapturous energy, like intense joy and pleasure. And again, let me remind you, you already have Jupiter in your fifth house of pleasure and love and romance and family and children and self-expression, creativity, uh, procreation, all of that. Like, you're good. You're good. Uh, this is really nirvanic. This is really nirvanic. Um, I don't even know what to say. Like, I, I absolutely love this for you. Um, and then here you go with the page of wands. Now, so you see you got all court cards, but... Uh, it's very significant, but he, the bigger picture here is this card is attributed to and, and it's huge, you know, we're doing a big fast forward here to April 23rd, 2024. So April 23rd or the 24th, depending on where you live, uh, is the full moon in Scorpio. And so the full moon in Scorpio in April 2024 corresponds to this new moon. And as you know, full moons bring like that culmination and completion. So it looks like there is something that, again, pages just like the aces bring in like a uh, new change, new energy. OK, this is truly transformative, especially because you got the Knight of Wands and the Page of Wands. Out of the court cards, they are the most transformative, right? The the the, the men in the uh, wand suits, okay? Um, but it's almost like you're going through this complete resurrection. I mean, you're good. You're absolutely good. This new moon is going to be a huge like like so much love going around here but also just it's like you're generating it it's it's like you're you're the uh wind to the windmill was that was that okay yeah i don't know uh page of wands uh as we know ones are about all about your passions your ideas creativity as i mentioned uh but ones are career related as well so there could be something for y'all in terms of career there could be something like you get your dream job now or you know what i mean there's 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 a lot that's happening here but again with this corresponding it's like taking it to the next level so whatever happens here with this new moon in april 2024 it's like there's that full moon that brings culmination to whatever uh is 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 starting to brew for you around this time and as in culmination as in like ascending to the next area because it's a page of wands and you know you can see even with these two cards the pyramids okay and without getting too much into it uh they really are like resurrection <laughs> machines I, like that's what i call that like they're uh you're absolutely good. This is wonderful. Uh, very excited for you. Um, you're good. You're good. So, uh, yeah, if there's anything, uh, if there's anything, especially with that Uranus energy that's coming through, um, 
the 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 main thing is if there is something that does come through that is unexpected i wouldn't be dismissive about it i would you know actually like handle it because that can be the one thing about the knight of swords uh and uh also uh you know the knight of swords uh has it kind of you know he can be like a little impulsive as well uh so uh yeah so if there is something unexpected that does happen with all this uranus energy the uranus oppositions uh just just don't dismiss it dismiss it okay that's that's the main thing but you're good you're 1000 percent good as long as you uh are, but this is all very transformative here transformation with the knight of wands transformation with the knight of swords with you know the butterflies on his armor you have the ace of cups very deeply emotionally transformative and then page one's transformative like this you're this is a very transformative new moon for you so capricorn you're good thanks so much hello aquarius so uh team aquarius listen this new moon in scorpio is in your 10th house so that is career that is public recognition it's your social status it's fame it is honors its achievements its leadership i love this i love this for you uh there is something really big happening in those areas of your life uh so if you haven't felt anything uh yet and you probably have started to feel it especially in scorpio season but uh yeah this new moon is definitely kick starting something new for you okay uh even like ascending in in that those areas of your life all right now the uh uranus okay so uranus which is opposing basically you know the new moon uh and mars and the sun uh which is all about surprises unexpected and here's the thing uh uh aquarius you could really feel this uh as i explained in the weekly reading uranus is your ruling planet so uh it is uh in your fourth house so Fourth house is your domestic sector. It's home. It's home matters. It is, uh, you know, family. It's your significant other, your partner who you live with. It's uh, things that have to do with home, your foundations of life, family, children, all of that, all of that. And so there could be something that comes up unexpectedly in that regard. Okay. Um, and it could be like, it really is a bigger focus on home is an energy that I'm getting it's more like home stuff. Like, I don't know your, uh, I don't know, like maybe all the electricity in your, on your block goes out or something. And you're just like, ah, I have this report to write or, ah, I have to send all these emails and, uh, you know, or, you know, maybe you are, I don't know, binge watching the mole or something. And, you know, the power goes out and you're just like, what? No, I need to know who, you know, like you, you never know. You never know. Obviously, you know, it's going to be a little bit like more than that, but, uh, just expect the unexpected, uh, in, in, in ways that you wouldn't have expected okay do you like that okay so aquarius let's see what's going on for you for uh this new moon in scorpio um and then i also said like you know i think i mentioned in your weekly reading it is also something like maybe there is something that uh you know uh with work like things are like really great at work uh, but then something calls you uh like home like there's like maybe like a technician or something that uh it messes something up and it, like it takes you away from work and you have to do something at home but anyway let's see what's going on for you uh aquarius for this new moon in scorpio uh with the uranus opposition that is happening on uh the 13th to the 14th depending on where you live uh in this world so team aquarius um i'm gonna do a four card spread and we're gonna see what is going on with you oh yeah. So, um, you're good. This is really crazy. You, you, you recognize, you recognize this card. I can't even, I can't even. Okay. So, um, yeah, yeah, you're, you're good. You're good. You're like I said, you're, you're moving on. You're moving on. There's some things that you're, you're, you're just, you're, you're, you're moving on from things that, uh, where it, it doesn't even matter if it's good or bad. It's just like, you are now ready to just move forward and, uh, seek, uh, new things. That's it's, it's, and you know, again, for some of y'all, it may be a little bittersweet. It could be something like maybe you have lived in the same place for like 10 years, but you actually, uh, met someone and now you're moving in with that person. And now that is your like, 
seeking, you know, moving on to this new place like in your life. And it's hard, right? It's hard to leave that place that you've known for 10 years. But even still, uh, there is a sense of you moving forward. OK, uh, really love this energy, uh, especially you see the eclipse happening in the background, really game changing. So this card is actually attributed to what's been happening for you. OK, um, especially during Scorpio season, which is really intense. And with it being Scorpio season, which is your 10th house, a lot of y'all, it could resonate with work in some way, career in some way, right? Uh, or again, the way that you like to be perceived uh, in public or, you know, public recognition, as I mentioned, or fame or whatnot. Uh, so this is a big thing, okay? Uh, especially because it's showing up again, right? Uh, again, um, you did get the King of Swords, uh, and you, this is another familiar face. He's constantly pop, popping up in your readings. And as you know, or maybe you don't, if you are new to my channel, this is uh, King of Swords is Aquarius. Okay, kings are fixed, and uh, swords are air. You're the fixed air sign. So, uh, King of Swords. This card is attributed to what you can expect during this new moon, and it it seems like you're just not messing around no more. You're not messing around no more. Uh, it, yeah, I'm getting more of like a big leadership. Uh, Qual like king of swords is a huge leader okay uh he's he's he he's even like intimidating okay but even still um with the fact that this new moon in scorpio is in your 10th house as i explained which is you know involves leadership but king of swords this card attributed to what you can expect with this new moon okay it's like you are just not messing around. It's 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 a lot of power, a lot of authority. Uh, just don't be too intimidating with that Uranus energy. Uh, if there is, um, you know, something that does come up surprising, like don't be that person that's like, you know, the, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the villain in an 80s movie with the collars popped up and he's just like, mm, right? Like, don't be that person. That, but uh, because a King of Swords can be like really, really, really you know intense too uh but so even still this is just you just feeling very empowered and it's like you ready to you know sword is tilted he's ready to strike he's ready to get going he wants to use that sword so uh but it is like hey you're sitting in that throne so you're good you're absolutely good i i really can't even uh like you're this is amazing because you got the empress and so the Empress, uh, really love this for you. Absolutely love this for you. Um, what's really interesting is that the Empress, so this card is attributed to what you can expect after the new moon. Like what is this new moon kicking off for you? What is this cycle that you can expect for the next few months? A lot of pleasure. A lot of love too for a lot of y'all. Babies too. Hey. That's the thing. Uh, Empress is pregnant. Okay. And three is all about, uh, you know, sure, it's all about growth and um, uh, uh, like development, but it's creation. It's a birth of new things as well. So even if, you know, you can see all the pomegranates on her gown, uh, which really is like that uh, reflecting like fertility, but there's that growth energy here. But it really is kind of just like you're so glorified, right? You're just like, ah, oh, things just feel good living life through passion and pleasure you even see the symbol of venus and the stone shaped heart there uh you're good so this is what you can expect there is something new remember three like i said is all about creation birth of new things well coincidentally happening during the the you know new moon which is new things uh so this is what you can expect coming out of this new moon just a lot of like you feeling just feeling good feeling really good she does hold the uh golden scepter by the way and that golden scepter creates all this abundance it creates all this like she has a power to create that uh even all this like richness in her life you can even see the golden wheat here representing you know a new crop when i say new you can expect to, it's almost like there's, uh, you know, if you are here for career, there's a lot of like, you will find something that you really love and that you're really passionate about and things are just going to be really nice, really, really nice. Uh, but, you know, just as, you know, individual, like this is just, you're good. And love can be a big thing for you now. All right. Love can be a big thing for you now. Um, I, I, uh, it's, it's, it, 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 if you, 
Okay, without going too much into it, love can be a thing, a, a big thing for you now. All right, um, especially when we get, uh, you know, more, uh, you know, we do have that full moon in Gemini uh, at the end of the month. That could be very revealing. It is in your fifth house of love, but uh, there's 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 just a lot of love here. Okay, we'll leave it at that uh, because you also got the seven of wands, and the seven of wands is um, what this card is attributed to is April twenty twenty four. Yeah, time travel, right? So um, the reason why is because April twenty twenty four is when we have that full moon in Scorpio. Okay, so. This new moon in Scorpio is corresponding to that full moon in Scorpio that's happening April 2024. And you know that there's culmination conclusion that happens with full moons in general. So, wow, there is just a sense of, uh, you know, this card, even though uh, it could be like. I'm, so let's 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 be clear about something. You do know that Pluto is moving into your sign, our sign, right? Uh, I'm in Aquarius. Uh starting in January, that is going to be a really, really big deal. That's going to be a really big deal. And so you're going to have a lot of power. Uh, it's, it's, uh, and so this happening in April. So thinking about what happens now for you. Okay. This cycle, it's a six month cycle. And what comes to conclusion, it seems like it's, you're going to have so much success around it with the Empress here that there may be some jealousy. <laughs> People may want what you have, but you know, this card is all about valor. Okay. It's all about like drawing a line in the sand. Okay. Uh, and I think that you, you know, with the King of Swords here and with the Empress, I think that you're, you're going to be fine. Uh, so, but it is going to be like, almost like, wow, you are, really ascending to the point that people are paying attention uh, and they're going to want a lot that you have. And it's not like a negative energy that I'm getting or a low frequency energy. It's just like you may, it's like you are going to be in the spotlight. Okay. So keep that in mind, Aquarius. This is amazing. Uh, you're good. Uh, you're good. We're good. We're good. All right. Thanks so much, Aquarius. Okay, Pisces. So this new moon in Scorpio is going to be in your ninth house. So uh, the ninth house rules spirituality. It rules your belief system, your philosophy. There, you know, it also rules higher education. So there could be something in terms of that, in terms of education, maybe, you know, in a formal way, whether you're teaching or even going back to school, uh, there's just something new around these areas of your life that, you know, ninth house is also um, long distance travel. And this may be a big thing for you. You may be planning a big trip, thinking about uh, taking a big trip, or you could be working with people overseas, uh, people from like, uh, you know, for like foreign lands or whatnot. Uh, uh, but the travel element may be a big thing for you because Uranus, the Uranus opposition, it happens to be in your third house and the third house also rules travel. So you see that what's happening over this new moon is hitting both of your travel uh, uh, homes, houses, uh, the two travel houses in the Zodiac wheel. So uh, third house is also communication. So I would just be careful about the way that you communicate over this new moon because Uranus, again, is all about surprises. So something in terms of communication the way that you're communicating uh there's their third house is also um siblings all right so uh aunts uncles even you know like distant relatives but also um neighbors okay so there could be something unexpected that comes up in that capacity uh but again third house is short distance travel so with all this energy in both third and your third and ninth house, there could be something around travel, maybe planning travel in, uh, or maybe you're on a trip and, you know, you, uh, flights delayed, you know, just again, something could be unexpected around this time. But with that said, let's go ahead and get started. See what's going on for you, Pisces, for this new moon in Scorpio. Uh, yes, Pisces. I'm doing a very simple four card spread and I will tell you what they all are attributed to. Oh, you're good. You're really good. 
You got the nine of cups. Okay. So this card, first of all, you know it. Well, maybe you don't. That's why I'm here. But it is a Pisces card. So this card is the Witch Come True card. It is a card of satisfaction. This is a card where uh, where it uh, corresponds to is um, score, like what's been happening for you. Okay. So the past few weeks, really what's been happening for you uh, during Scorpio season. It looks like things, you've been good. You've been very, uh, there's been something that you wanted that could have come through. This is a card where uh, it is, like I said, it is a card of satisfaction, but it's like the wish come true card. You know, I say it's the genie in a bottle card, genie in a bottle energy. He even sits there like a genie in a bottle. Um, but you see the cups aligned over his head. Uh, a lot of enlightenment there, okay? Uh, there could be something that you're just very proud of yourself about too uh, that's coming up. So uh, be very proud of yourself for, uh, especially with Scorpio energy. Um, it's not as, you know, it, it is very intense, uh, but you know, you being a fellow uh, water sign, Scorpio, right? Being your BFF as a water sign, it could really be, uh, you know, something that you enjoyed. It's almost like some, if there were challenges, you are seeing like, okay, now I know why that happened or I experienced that and I feel good about myself about the way that I handled it. Uh, but it's even still, it just seems like there is a sense where things you've, you've been satisfied with uh, a lot of things that have been happening recently, you know, comparatively to, you know, uh, you know, if you think about like summer or even like beginning of fall where things were just so intense with, you know, we had all those retrogrades, we had eclipses, we had a lot. Now, you did get the eight of wands. Okay. Uh, really like this for you. Uh, eight of wands. This card is attributed to the actual new moon. So what to expect around this new moon? It looks like things are just going to move fast for you. Uh, it looks like things that you want are, uh, are, are going to land. Uh, there is, um, a sense of, um, if you are here for career, there's, yeah, big time. Uh, this card is attributed to, it's a Sagittarius card. Okay, so it's, uh, uh, we're moving into Sagittarius season. Sagittarius is your 10th house of career. Okay. And if you're not here for career, the 10th house is also like your social status, like uh, public recognition, it's honors, it's achievements, leadership. Uh, so this is like one of only two cards in all of tarot where there's no figure. Okay. No person, no nothing, but just eight ones zipping through the air okay uh and you can see the wands are completely aligned so a lot of alignment happening for you okay right now and uh things are moving they're they're gonna start moving fast for you uh they are gonna start moving really fast for you now uh in you got the ten of swords all right so this is actually you know it it doesn't look good on paper, literally, but Ten of Swords is a card of New Dawn. So this is saying that, okay, so this card is attributed to what you can expect coming after the new moon, okay? And so uh, this new moon is a six-month cycle. And so what you can expect uh, for your new beginning, new journey that, or uh, part of your life, something that's changing, right? Especially when it comes to your ninth house. Uh, but this, again, this card is the card of New Dawn. So these dark clouds are actually clearing. Sunlight is coming through. Now, you see this man completely impelled by those swords. And so the next six months could be, uh, in a sense, you may feel that there is this struggle, okay, it, of, of uh, almost like, again, it's more about your belief system here. It's more about your philosophies, the way that you see things. Now, there is a sense of like where you may feel that there is like a tug of war uh, is the biggest energy that's coming through. Uh, but it's actually good for you. It's like there it's like putting to bed certain ways that you were seeing things. And even if there were uh, things that were really stressing you out, like maybe like uh, where you feel like, oh, I can't even go on anymore. Right. Again, with him being completely impelled by these swords, uh, it's leading you to something greater. Okay. And clarified, you see, you got the chariot here. And so again, this is more of a mental thing. Swords are the mental suit, the chariot. This is all about willpower. This is all about self-determination. It's all about moving forward. Uh, 
And, you know, you do see the two sphinxes here. He's not even, he didn't even have reins. You see that he's got the magician's baton. And so what does that mean? Him having the magician's baton from the magician's card in card one. Look at his shoulders. He's got slivers of the moon from the high priestess card two. You see like uh, even like the, the lingam and the yoni here from the lover's card card six. So it's like, you know, as the chariot is card seven, it's like through his journey, he's learning as he goes. He's learning and it's really empowering him. All right. Now, as I was saying, the two sphinxes, he's not holding on to rain. So how is he controlling them? It's that willpower. It's that mindset. Okay. And so these are, you know, obviously like representing like dualities or whatnot. Uh, but it is you, it's like you being in this place. Remember this new moon in Scorpio in your ninth house, your belief system, how you see things. It's almost like you're learning from everything that has been uh, like maybe challenging. Okay. Maybe where it felt like uh, you had, again, like I was just getting like that tug of war energy up here, but it's all coming to an end because you are pushing forward. 10, by the way, is the end. One zero equals one new beginning. So, New beginning coming with the new moon. All right. So it's uh, and the last thing, his hand gesture, by the way, is the same as the Hierophant. OK. And, you know, the man, the, philo the philanthropic man in the Six of Pentacles. And so it's that uh, it, it's like blessings. It's almost like blessing in disguise. And so this is truly like the next six months or gives me this. It kind of could be like a learning experience for you, but also an empowering uh, experience for you, especially with the chariot clarifying, you know, the, the ten of swords here. So, again, new beginning uh, that's happening for you, like this new dawn. And then you have the emperor. And so this is really absolutely amazing, uh, especially because, um, well, the emperor is – this card is attributed to April 23rd or the 24th, depending on where you live in this world, 2024. Okay. So we are like moving up in, you know, we're time traveling now. Um, so the reason why is because that is when we have the full moon in Scorpio. So that full moon in Scorpio corresponds to this new moon in Scorpio that's happening this like now. Okay. Uh, so as you know, full moons do bring a sense of completion and collusion. And it's like what you've learned is only going to make you a lot more powerful. The emperor is the ruler. Okay. Ruler of his kingdom, of his empire, of his destiny. It's like he calls the shots. He lays down the law of the land. Like this is like when we, I talk about empowerment, which is what this new moon in Scorpio is. I mean, we're talking about empowerment. OK, uh, you did hear me say ruler of his destiny. Right. Uh, he does have the orb in his hand representing the world. He's got the world in his hand, the Egyptian ankh in his other hand, that driving life force and, you know, long white beard for wisdom. He's wearing a crown like uh, red cloak for passion, power. You even see underneath his robe. He has uh, the. Um, armor okay so fully protected um and if you think about the emperor who is aries okay uh, especially you see the uh, symbol of aries in his throne right the rams uh that is your second house okay so uh the, which is all about self-worth and, and and self value uh so you're good you're good uh the next six months could be like a big learning process of learning the things that uh, may have been a challenge for you and overcoming them, especially mentally, especially spiritually as well. Really, really, uh, that is a big matter here, but you're good. You're good. Uh, April, by the way, is going to be gangbusters. April's going to be gangbusters. It's going to be really, really woo, love it. Um, but yeah, with the eight of ones here that you, you're, you're good. You're good. Okay. Um, if there is one thing that uh, with this Uranus opposition that is happening uh, in your third house, it really is that communication uh, because it, you know, this is not only a Sagittarius card, it's Mercury in Sagittarius is what this is attributed to. So uh, Mercury is a planet of communication, okay, and logic. So just be very uh, mindful about the way that you do communicate. It should anything go like, 
sideways or unexpected uh, for with the Uranus opposition. All right. But otherwise, you're great. Thanks so much, Pisces.